Now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the principals first, in the blue corner to my right, wearing the blue trunks, weighing 174 pounds, his professional record, 18 victories, three defeats, one draw, and seven wins coming by way of knockout, a proud member of New York City's finest, hailing from the big city, New York City, rated number three by the WBA, and number one by the WBC, the challenger, Tricky Rick Frazier. Frazier. His opponent in the red corner, wearing the gold sequin trunks, weighing 175 pounds, with a professional record of 38 victories, one defeat, 32 wins coming by way of knockout. The pride of Pensacola, Florida, the WBC and WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. 12 rounds for the WBC and WBA light heavyweight championship of the world. dressing room. I'm confident that you know exactly what I expect of you. Gentlemen, I will control this fight. This will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Touch gloves. May the best man win. This small 16 and 3 quarter foot ring did not affect the earlier fight. It could affect this fight if Fraser intends to do a lot of running. Perhaps it signals the fact that Roy Jones, having had to train through the holidays, doesn't want to have a long fight. Well, again, you know, this ring it does not meet with the regulation size, according to the WBC. The minimum is supposed to be 18 feet. Yeah, but they make up the rules as they go along. You know that. who sometimes doesn't use the jab very much. Tonight starts out using the jab against Frazier, the southpaw. And as usual, Roy defies convention because a lot of fighters don't try to jab against southpaws. They lead with the straight right hand instead. Well, one thing that he is doing that I agree with that he wasn't doing the other times before southpaws is he's moving to his left most of the time. Now he just went to the right. What's the advantage of moving to your left against the southpaw? Then that sets up your left hook to the body and head. And with that, then you can also nail him with a stay right hand. The other way, you're walking right into him. Break clean. Break clean. Step back. You want to see the opposite example? Go back and look at your tape of Delaway a Whitaker and watch Oscar move to his right all night long against the southpaw, therefore nullifying his own left hook. Absolutely. Well, so far, Frazier is living up to your analysis. No offense, all defense. When asked yesterday what he would do against Roy Jones, Frazier basically said, hey, what can you say about Roy Jones? He's super fast, hits very hard, has every conceivable skill. I guess I'll do whatever I can. Frazier flicking a couple of jabs. Jones, who has been increasingly devastating to the body in the last year, has only sneaked in one effective body punch against Frazier so far. He has nothing to punch off because Frazier just does not lead. His first move is always defensively. Makes it very, very difficult for Jones. Not that he can't win the rounds easily. But for him to nail him with a big punch. Down goes 
Frazier. Was that a punch? He's, he's complaining that he slipped. Looked like a fall to me. It looked to me like he uh, went in the water. Well, I suspect there's no boxing announcer alive who wouldn't have looked for the earliest opportunity to say, down goes Frazier. And there it was. overhead look of this knockdown you see the you see the cushion with the advertisement on the side of the ring just outside of the ropes he stepped on that and slipped there was a light tap to the top of the head that might have helped the slip it was completely off balance he was so even though Pepsi one has only one calorie it was heavy enough to knock over Richard Frazier and give you an opportunity to pay homage to Howard Cosell's call in the George Well, George it wasn't fight. exactly the thunder of Jamaica. It, it wasn't <laughs> Foreman lifting Frazier off the canvas with his uppercuts. But it was the best we could do for the moment. And now the advertisement has been removed from the far side of the canvas. Well, no matter how small the ring is, Frazier is finding a way to make it look bigger. And Jones switches to southpaw and nails Frazier with a right hook. And leads with the left out of the southpaw stance. Frazier still will not punch back. That will walk right through him. I suspect that Jones is switching to southpaw because he believes that'll give him a better punching angle against the southpaw Frazier. Well, he's switching to southpaw because he doesn't respect Frazier's arsenal at all. You can see Frazier when he gets hit, he doesn't punch back. If he blocks the punch, he doesn't punch back. Will it be appropriate for the referee to step in and say, Ricky Fraser, you're here to fight. If you don't throw punches, I'm going to penalize you and maybe even stop the fight. Well, again, Larry, many years ago, the most effective thing the referee could do is walk over to the corner and say, unless you start fighting, I'm going to disqualify you and you're not going to get paid. They hear that word paid and somehow it wakes them up a little bit. Gets their attention. We mentioned that Jones is fighting a third consecutive southpaw tonight. Lou Duval in the summer. Otis Grant in November up at Foxwoods. And in both of those fights, he switched to southpaw stances from time to time as well. As he did against Eric Lucas a few years ago in fighting a southpaw who once went the distance in a victory over Frazier. Frazier seems to be patrolling the beat in a dangerous neighborhood. Jones whacking him with a lead left hand out of the southpaw stance. Make him feel more comfortable if somebody put the lights out. Now Jones goes back to his side. Jones stance. Jones in the conventional stance holding his left hand below his waist and looking for lead right hand opportunities. There's a landed right. If we had a 20-foot ring, this could be truly dreadful. Frazier is agile enough to, to move away from punches, even in the 16-foot ring, because again, he doesn't give you anything to punch off. Left hook stunned Frazier. Little right hand cap knocked him down. And hello, Chris Green is not written on the bottom of Frazier's shoes. And that's the end. Armando Garcia decides that that's a good moment for stopping the fight. Well, this is an early stoppage state, as we saw in our last double header here a few weeks ago. In those circumstances, we questioned whether the fight should have been stopped. In this circumstance, I have to applaud the referee because it only could have gotten uglier. And, and uglier, and uglier. What about the stoppage, Harold? Jim, you know something? If you're in a down position, you're in a down position. 
Rick Frazier's whole body was off that canvas. The only thing that was on the canvas when Armando Garcia got denied was the soles of his shoes. He's not in a down position. Armando Garcia should have cleaned the gloves off and he was going to let it go, let it go, but not count to 10. You don't, you don't count 10 with a guy in, a, in an up position. You count 10 when a guy's in a down position. When something is touching the canvas other than the soles of his shoes. I'm not sure the 10 count had anything to do with the stoppage of the fight. I think he was just sort of... He just stopped the fight. That's the way I see it. Filling out the count. Yeah. Yes, but he counted him out. No, we don't... Let's see. I think he let him get up and then he stopped the fight. That's just a technicality, Harold. This, this was a...